Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes on a hot and humid Wednesday as temperatures are going to make it up in the low and middle 90s. Might get a little bit of relief if you head toward the shore. Not so much the New Jersey shore because of the less of a sea breeze. There'll be a bit of a sea breeze, but even coastal areas are going to get up close to 90. You'll get a bit more relief on the south shore of Long Island and the southeast eastern New England. But take a look at temperatures this afternoon for highs in uh, southeast Pennsylvania, down into Maryland and northeast Virginia. We're looking at highs up in the middle 90s, lower 90s as you get up closer to New York City and into southern New England with 80s and even some 70s right along the immediate shore. So we'll have, we're going to talk more about this, and we're also going to talk about Tropical Storm Fred. Uh, first, though, Weather in 5 brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware at 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, New York. 631-756-1125 is the phone number for the best prices in town. OmniTrueValue.com. And also brought to you by Wholesale Holiday Lighting by Giannini, your complete holiday lighting specialist, meeting all your decorating needs, whether you want your home decorated or maybe you want to be the decorator and have it as part of your business. They're at 162 Ocean Avenue in Lindenhurst, New York, also on Long Island, 631-957-5106. And the website here is liholidaylighting.com. So one of the things that uh, we're going to be watching for, because we saw this happen yesterday evening as a couple of clusters of big thunderstorms developed, uh, one in uh, east southeastern Pennsylvania, south central southeastern Pennsylvania, and the other one that developed from north central New Jersey on southward. Uh, these uh, thunderstorms, <clears throat> we had uh, quite a few severe thunderstorm warnings with those clusters, and I think we'll, we may see them again in some areas late this afternoon and into the first part to, of tonight, the tougher question is always the where, uh, because uh, the nature of this being in a tropical air mass, it's very difficult to forecast the specific spots where these storms are going to form. But the one thing I am noticing, for example, if you look down, uh, these are 11 a.m. temperatures. We're approaching the noontime noon hour, and the dew points are really outrageously high. We have dew points up above 80 in some places, like down in Vineland, New Jersey, has a dew point of 81. Uh, the temperatures are approaching the 90-degree mark in many locations with dew points in the mid to upper 70s. Uh, again, in the same areas as, as that we saw yesterday, south-central Pennsylvania, southeastern Pennsylvania, and then points south and west of there. So I'm going to think that that would probably be the area that has the greater risk but the instability in the atmosphere is, in some cases, off the wall pretty much everywhere in the region from eastern Pennsylvania to southern New England. So don't be shocked if a thunderstorm pops up in a place today where perhaps it didn't pop up yesterday. And equally, don't be shocked if those of you who got hit yesterday wind up getting uh, the same thing happening again. The best way to approach thunderstorm risk in situations like this is know that the risk is there. If you get it, you get it. And if you don't, uh, consider yourself fortunate. I guess that's probably the best way to look at it. Watching the uh, satellite here, a few uh, things of note. Of course, you're seeing, we're getting these upper air disturbances that are moving through, and there's another one right now setting up across northern Pennsylvania down through western PA into West Virginia. And you're seeing clouds blow up there as that uh, little trough moves to the east. So that's probably going to be the trigger mechanism for any thunderstorms later this afternoon and into the first part of tonight. Also, around the upper Great Lakes, I'm sorry, around the Great Lakes, the upper Midwest into the Ohio Valley, once again, this area is at risk for severe weather. And the Storm Prediction Center has a good chunk of uh, the Great Lakes states in either slight risk or enhanced risk. And that includes the cities of Chicago and Milwaukee. Detroit lies just outside of that. Notice the marginal risk line runs from eastern Vermont through western Massachusetts, the Connecticut and New York State line to about New York City, and then right down the Garden State Parkway in New Jersey, and then continuing southward to include all of Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, just about all of PA in a, in a marginal risk, and the same goes for upstate New York. Uh, at the moment, going into the noontime hour, uh, no severe thunderstorm watches are, are, uh, are up. Uh, but that may change later on today. As far as uh, rainfall is concerned, in these uh, 
convective situations, it's kind of hard to really tally what rainfall amounts could be. You get a thunderstorm sitting over you for a little while, and you know you can wind up with some pretty hefty rainfall. So these are general rainfall forecasts. And we're starting to see uh, the maps, because this goes out seven days, uh, we're seeing the rainfalls that are going to be poten the uh, potential of Tropical Storm Fred, which is now over Hispaniola, uh, over Florida and up the Florida west coast to the Panhandle and also up the Florida east coast to uh, coastal South Carolina and coastal Georgia. Also some big rains forecast for uh, northeast Georgia, north and east up the, western, uh, up the uh, Appalachians into western Virginia on the order of several inches or more over the next seven days. It's certainly something that we're going to want to uh, pay close attention to. Now, as far as our weather, the weather is concerned overall, the um, main issue uh, for the next three days is going to just, I mean, issues. It's, it's, it's the heat and the humidity and the chance for thunderstorms. We do have a cold front that will bring this all to an end uh, come Friday. And that is good news. And you can see on Friday with the cold front approaching, we have the GFS model on the new run, which is just coming out, producing a line of showers and thunderstorms. And, uh, and we have potential for severe weather risk uh, for the next three days. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe Friday will be the day where we could wind up with the highest level of risk with this approaching front moving through. And then after that, uh, a little bit of a break uh, it will be in order. I think we're going to see uh, a gradual lowering of humidity, so some relief, uh, humidity relief, and also a little bit of temperature relief, too. We'll be back into the 80s over the weekend. But in the meantime, uh, with highs today in the low to mid-90s, uh, highs tomorrow from uh, southern New England on down to the mid-Atlantic states, we're looking at high temperatures reaching the middle and upper 90s. Even coastal locations are going to have a tough time of it. And we'll be back low to mid-90s on Friday, Saturday, uh, mid to upper 80s. Sunday, I, I think it'll be more like low to mid 80s. And right now, the weekend overall, I think, is looking pretty good. So let's uh, let's now talk about Tropical Storm Fred, uh, where uh, uh, just made uh, making landfall there on the south coast of the Dominican Republic. It's going to cross it the long way, so it's likely to weaken to a tropical depression. Maximum sustained winds are at, on the 11 a.m. advisory were 45 miles an hour, 18.2 north, 69.7 west, moving west-northwest at 16. And you can see the forecast track from the Hurricane Center really hasn't changed too much in the last couple of days. Uh, emerging back out over the open waters uh, come Thursday morning, uh, just, uh, to the, just to the east of that, uh, west, that eastern most point of Cuba, and then sort of straddling the coastline of Cuba all the way up through Friday and into Saturday morning. By Saturday morning, the Hurricane Center has that uh, center forecast to be right uh, near Key West. And then northwest from there, uh, up the west coast of Florida, offshore to, to the Florida Panhandle. And I think this, this is the opportunity when it gets into the northeastern Gulf, where upper air conditions may become more favorable for strengthening. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens and, and what <clears throat> what it looks like after it uh, finishes its interaction with uh, Hispaniola and with um, with Cuba. But here, here's what it looks like. Even on the satellite, you can see it's getting a little bit distorted as it moves over uh, into Hispaniola. And it's, I think, going to continue to get distorted and might even weaken back down to a tropical depression. Those clouds that you see up to the north... There's strong westerly winds in the upper atmosphere. You can actually see those clouds. They're kind of blow. They're kind of they're moving from west to east. So at the high levels of the atmosphere, just to the north of where this system is, uh, we have strong westerly winds, and that uh, that's something that tropical systems don't like. Those strong winds aloft. It's going to be straddling a very fine needle there, where the the shear is a bit less, but. Once it gets into the, into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, the wind shear is forecast to relax over the weekend, and that's why we think there is the potential for some strengthening. Here's a, a quick look at the uh, intensity guidance. So anything in that green area, uh, are, those are models that are forecasting this to, uh, be a, uh, to be tropical storm strength. And while a few of them have it down to a depression, they all bring it back to tropical storm strength within 72 hours. And... Many of these models actually uh, have it up to 55 and 60 knots when it gets into the time frame 
that the system is going to be in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. We even have a couple of them pushing it up uh, to minimal hurricane. I don't know if it gets there. Uh, it's going to really depend on <clears throat> the uh, upper air setup when, uh, when we get into uh, the northeastern Gulf over the weekend. And the hurricane model guidance, the uh, tracking models or what everybody looks at, uh, the spaghetti plots, they call them, very, very tight from the northernmost to the southernmost track, uh, which lends a high degree of confidence. Even later in the forecast period, when you go out uh, to days three, four, and five and beyond, uh, those tracks are awfully close together. So it, it kind of takes it right through the Florida Straits and then uh, off the well off the coast, the west coast of Florida, uh, on up into the panhandle as far as the center is concerned. But this is definitely going to put uh, the uh, going to put Florida and maybe eventually even the southeast parts of the southeastern U.S. in the area that gets uh, quite a bit of rainfall out of it. So we're going to we update this on our weather platform on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash meteorologist Joe Chaffee. And uh, of course, we're going to be watching the developments over the course of the next couple of days. Well, weather in five went a little long today. Uh, it actually goes along on most days, but this was even extra long because we're approaching 12 minutes here. Brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware at 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, 631-756-1125 for the best prices in town, omnitruevalue.com. And Wholesale Holiday Lighting by Giannini at 162 Ocean Avenue in Lindenhurst, New York, 631-957-5106 is the phone number there. And the website liholidaylighting.com. So we're going to be watching uh, radars. I think that's probably the best, the, the uh, obvious approach here. Uh, watching uh, uh, radars uh, late this afternoon and this evening to see where any thunderstorms pop up. And we'll, of course, be covering this and Tropical Storm Fred, uh, our weekend forecast, and the long range all there tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show uh, with my colleague Joe Rayo uh, at 730 Eastern time. So we will see you then.